Dark won't stop the light from getting through. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? It's all creation groaning. Is a new creation coming? Is the glory of the Lord to me the light within our midst? Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Say amen. amen. I'd rather be here in the best hospital in the area. Amen. We're glad you made it out to the house of the Lord this morning. We're, we're thankful that you made it to Sunday school. And uh, it's good to see everybody here today. And uh, we're kind of in the transition period. And uh, next week it'll be booming again, you know. So, uh, but praise the Lord. I'm, I'm glad this morning for Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's a wonderful Savior. And uh, we, uh, we didn't show any anniversaries this week, this past week, but we did have some birthdays. Um, on Monday, November the 22nd, um, Ginger Rogers and Stephen Sims celebrated a birthday. Wednesday the 24th, Rick Lester and Lahoma Miles and... Thursday, the 25th, David Musser and Tristan Perryman. And uh, Friday, November 26th, Amelia Doyle and Rodney Jackson. And then uh, today, Courtney Eady and Krista Lake and Jeremiah Taylor. So uh, if you see these, wish them a happy birthday. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. 
and uh, we don't have any birthday singers this morning, so let's sing to them this morning. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Man, we do have uh, some promotions this morning. It's promotion day. So, uh, Sister Stoner, can you help me out this morning? I appreciate it. And uh, when I call your name, come on up here and receive your diploma, okay? And if you don't want to come by yourself, bring somebody with you, okay? Like mama or daddy or uncle or aunt or somebody. All right, promoted to nursery one from the nursery, Nora Harris. Nursery one from the nursery, Zoe Nyswanger. Nursery one from the nursery, Blake Holden. I think we got a lot of these still celebrating Thanksgiving. So, uh, Nursery two from Nursery one, uh, Josh Sappington. Beginner one from Nursery two, McKenna Farrell. Beginner two from Beginner one, Logan Harder. K-5 from Beginner 2, Susanna Bergalt. And K-5 from Beginner 2, Talon Miles. And we're going to get Pastor Taylor to come up here and pray for these children. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. We'll, uh... Pray for the children. Jesus said, suffer little children come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom. Uh, I always try to be mindful of the fact that um, Jesus said that we needed to have faith like a child. Children uh, have a tendency to be willing to believe. And uh, I think it's important these kids are instructed in spiritual things and I appreciate parents that bring their children to church so let's pray for all the children of the church especially these father we come to you this morning Lord and we are thankful for the children that you have put in the church I uh, thank you Lord especially because uh, they'll be the ones that will grow up to be a part of the church that keeps the church functioning so that you can reach lost people in this world. And so I just ask you that you'd instill things in their heart in the Sunday school classes that would help them understand the heart of God and know about your burden for lost people. Help them now, Lord. Keep your hand on them. Help them to further their Christian education. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give them all a big hand. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Now I want to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, I do hope that uh, everybody's had an enjoyable holiday. Uh, we um, were able to have uh, family here for part of it anyway. And we had a really 
good time. I, uh, I guess the older I get, the more I appreciate my family. I didn't realize, you know, sometimes when they was young and running around screaming like Comanches and all that stuff. And, but I realize now just how blessed I was. <laughs> and so it's, it's, uh, I'm thankful that I did finally figure it out. Aren't you glad you finally figured out how wonderful it is to have a family? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, anyone over here have a request for prayer this morning? Yeah, Sister Evans. Anyone else over here have a request for prayer? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, Brother Holden. Yeah, back there. Okay. Back there, sister. Okay. Anyone else in the middle have a request for prayer? Someone over here have a request? Anyway. Yeah, Sister Betty. Yeah, Sister Irons. Okay. All right, why don't we stand together? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like for us all to pray, and uh, we're going to believe the Lord help us today, and I'd like for uh, Brother Begald, if he would, to conclude our prayer, but let's all pray together. Father, we come to you, Lord, we're a needy people today. Um, all the requests on the hearts of your people that they didn't feel comfortable with making in a crowd, but you know what they are. I just ask you, Lord, that you would you'd come by by your power, and that you'd work in every one of our lives and in every situation that we're struggling with that we need your help with. God, I pray that you'd help us, especially in this service, the Lord. We're not here by chance, but we're here by divine decree, and there's things that you want to do in our life that we can get in church. Otherwise, you wouldn't have fixed it so that we were supposed to be here on the first day of the week. So I pray, God, that you would help us to worship you this morning in spirit and truth. Help us to receive what your spirit wants to speak to our hearts specifically as individuals. And help us corporately, God, to draw closer to you as a church body. Help us, Lord, today in the name of Jesus.
Yes, Lord. You can be seated. Well, Dodd's going to come lead us in some singing. I want to um, want to remind us we come to church to worship. We want to see to it that we don't forget our errand while we're here. There's a lot of other things that uh, can crowd into your mind and occupy your thoughts but they're not helpful but worship is when we allow God to somehow stir in our hearts things that we really need and the major one is we need to love him love him him. We just, you know, had a wonderful season and a lot of Thanksgiving. Be a good time for us to do some thanks again today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to see all of our visitors here this morning. Um, G, brother. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's worth it sounds like The sweetest name on earth. Do you love Jesus? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me And oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus To me, he is so wonderful. Oh, to me, he is so wonderful. Oh, to me, he is so wonderful. Because he first loved me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. If you would, in your holiness hymns, turn to page uh, 33.
Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, living a light for those who long have gone, guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us the light to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of light, guiding the pilgrims through the night. Over the mountain till the break of dawn. And unto the light of perfect day, oh, it will give out a lovely ray. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, oh, of Bethlehem. Us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us the light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest for the redeemed, the good and blessed. Yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now that star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, oh, of Bethlehem. Shine upon us until the glory dawn. Give us the light to light the way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jeez, fine. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bed. Bethlehem. Oh, come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him Christ the Lord sing choirs of angels sing in 
exultation. Sing all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Oh, glory to God, glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord oh yea Lord we greet thee oh born this happy morning Jesus to thee be all glory again. O word of the Father, O now in flesh appearing, O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy he cries the lord for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy he cries the Lord oh he's worthy of our praise here this morning hallelujah let's praise him thank you Jesus praise the name of the Lord hallelujah Praise the Lord. I'm like Brother Dodd said, we're glad everyone's here in the house of the Lord. We're going to let our children, church, uh, children go to children's church at this time. Amen. I want to remind you that the ladies' Christmas party is uh, Thursday, December 2nd at 7 o'clock in the fellowship hall. There's a sign-up sheet there in the foyer. If you can get that, uh, your name down on that, we'd like to invite all the ladies that'd like to come, be a part of that. And then Sunday the 5th, OCA is going to have uh, the morning service, and then the Millicans will be here in the evening service. Why don't we have our ushers come? We'll take up our uh, tithes and offerings for today. Praise the Lord. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving uh, day and weekend. Brother Mike, why don't you pray over our friend? Lord, we're thankful for this uh, opportunity we have to be in your house once again. We ask, O Lord, that you receive the portion of your blessing from each of us this morning. We just refer to your name and bless those who give from it. Amen. Amen.
Sister Lorraine, why don't you all come? We really appreciate it, Brother Dave and Sister Lorraine coming yesterday and uh, putting up all the Christmas decorations. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Appreciate all they do, but thank you. Now that's a true song. I remember, is this thing working? Oh, yeah. I remember my first pastor, he had a saying that, um, about how temporary things are. He said, uh, the stuff we have here, if we go up, they're going to fall off, and if we go down, it's going to burn off. That's why we need to look for eternal gains. 
I got a passage of scripture here I'd like to read in 1 Peter chapter 1, if you want to take the trouble to turn there. And um, relatively uh, familiar passage of scripture for Bible reading folks. 1 Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 7. Through nine. It says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, and whom, though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Verse 7, the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about fireproof faith. Fireproof faith. Now, whether you know it or not, you soon find it out that fiery trials are part of the Christian life. They are. I mean, we constantly face difficult things. The Bible says that a man's life is a few days and full of trouble. So we're constantly facing difficult things. We feel the pressure of the world. The devil continually turns up the burner on fiery trials. Some trials are of a greater degree than others. Did you know that? Some temptations are stronger than others. But every Christian that follows Jesus very long will face fiery trials. Uh, an intensely difficult situation that threatens their faith. That's what a fiery trial is. Intensely difficult situation threatening your faith. Now, you may not have wanted to quit serving the Lord when you went through one, but you wondered if you were going to survive it. Right? I mean, some of y'all have faced fiery trials. You know whereof I speak. But the Apostle Peter tells us in our text that even though a fiery trial is not a pleasant thing, he said that it has the potential to help us. I mean, that, that the trial of your faith, what? Being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. The trying of your faith being precious or valuable like gold. Now, the Apostle Peter tells us that, and, 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 and Peter compares the value of a fiery trial on your faith to the importance of fire separating gold from its impurities, because that's, that's why they fire gold. That's why they heat it. I, I, never, I never had enough gold to fire it up, but I've read about how they do it. Matter of fact, I have. Now, y'all may not, may not believe this or not, but, but back in old Virginia, I used to help uh, put on some tin roofs and tin and, 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 uh, and, and uh, tin roofs, you, you solder them together with lead solder. And, you, and, and a lot of times uh, down there when they had them secret gutters, y'all don't know what that is, but that was a gutter that you couldn't see it from the ground, but it was built into the soffit. And, and they had them secret gutters, and, and, and they would line them things with lead. 
and you'd melt that stuff, had a, had a gizmo, and you melt that stuff in a little uh, ladle and pour it in there. And then back in the old days, now y'all, I, I'm, I'm not trying to give y'all, but I'm just telling you, you know, uh, that stuff, it, it, it gets, gold is like lead. It melts when it gets really hot. And when, and when they melt gold, the impurities would come to the top and separate the gold from the impurities. That's what it's talking about when it says like gold tried in the fire. So uh, most gold, uh, to reach its purest form, it's got to go through the fire. And faith, to be able to reach its purest form, most powerful form, most capable form, it has to go through trials. The trying of your faith, it says. So faith has, has been tried. is faith that has been proved to work. That's what it's talking about. Faith that has been proved that it works. So, now, you, you, I know we don't like trials, but trials are very important to us in our ability to be able to live a Christian life in a very difficult world. I mean, how many of you would like to fly on an airplane that had never been tested? I wouldn't. I would I wouldn't I wouldn't want to buy a set of tires for my car that they had never tested that type of tire to see if it would hold up. Can you imagine going down 44 doing about 75 miles an hour on what my dear old daddy used to call Maypops? Did y'all ever did any of y'all ever buy any of them Maypops for your car? They used to have a retread tire, and we called it a may pop because it may pop at any time. But you don't want to be doing 75 miles an hour on a may pop. And you don't want to be going down through your life in this world with faith that has never had any testing done to it. So the Apostle uh, Peter says it just like. You know, the fire that separates gold from, from base impurities, it takes the, the heat of a trial to bring out the real value of our faith in Jesus. So a difficult as a trial is to go through, trials are actually beneficial. What? No, Brother Taylor, and I never saw any. No, if we use our faith in God to enable us to endure fiery trials, we benefit from it in the long haul. At this moment, some of you are in the middle of a fiery trial. How do you know that, Brother Taylor? They tell you about it? No, you don't have to tell me about it. How can, can, can a, uh, uh, I know, I, I know because that's the way it is. That's the way life is. We all, we all are going to, that's why it's in the Bible about facing fiery trials. It's because it is part of life if you're trying to serve the Lord. How can, how can a trial though that I'm going through, how, how, uh, right now, how can I ever get any positive benefit out of it? Now that's what somebody in this room is asking right now. How can I get a positive benefit out of the trial I'm facing right now? Come on now, I want y'all to think with me. I, this isn't going to take very long. I'm, I'm going to get you in the altar here and let you pray a little bit. But I, I want you to think about this, about the fact that there are a certain amount of, 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 of potential to fiery trials. It can help you build up a fireproof faith. Now, I, I, whether you believe it or not, I just read from the Bible where it says the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. The trying. Now, 
Now, don't, don't, don't y'all get worried. I'm not going to take long. I just, but there's somebody in here that you're going through something difficult and you're trying to wrap your mind around how in the world can I ever get any benefit out of what I'm dealing with right now. And this scripture tells us that you can if you hold on. That verse is in the Bible. It's true. It is forever settled in heaven. The trial of your faith being more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. Now verse 7 says, its value, our faith, will be clear when we see Jesus. Notice what it says. For the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. A lot of the stuff you're going through now, you're not really going to realize the benefit of it until you get to heaven. Until finally your feet strike Zion and you recognize the fact that, hey, it was the fact that I, was, that I went through those things and they stopped stiffened me and helped me to be determined to make it that I finally got here. Verse 8 says that, that we haven't seen him yet, but we love him and want to see him. That's what it says, whom having not seen, you love, and whom though now you see him not, yet believing. We want to see him. And verse 9 says that the end result of putting your faith in Jesus is the eternal salvation of the soul. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. And so in other words, that simply means it will be worth it if you will maintain your faith and confidence in Jesus. Just, just keep believing. Just keep on believing. Keep on holding on. This trial you're in won't last forever. The clouds will soon be gone. Somebody, somebody in here really need to get a hold of that belief. At this point in my sermon, I, I, when, I was, when I was working on this, the Holy Ghost impressed on me that, that, that to have you, you, you look at, at, at what the Apostle Peter says in, uh, in, in chapter 1, verse 3 through 9. Now, I want, you, I want you to take a quick look at that. First Peter chapter 1. In verse 3 through 9. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Huh? Did, you, did you see that? Verse 3. That, That helps us to, to focus on the fact that we have a living Savior. Hmm? I mean, that's what he's saying. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, which has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It, he is alive. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. He is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. And while you're going through the trial that you're going through right now, He is waiting to hear your cry and respond to it. Yeah, I, I, Trials help us remember that Jesus is alive to help us and to make us want to know him in the power of his resurrection. That's what Paul was talking about. Oh, that I might know him, not only in the fellowship of his suffering, but in the power of his resurrection. In other words, so that I could know that he is alive and he's able to do something in my situation at this very moment. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Did you see that? Advanced reservations. I mean, trials help us remember that, thank God, we have advanced reservations for the best vacation spot in the universe. Glory to God, we're going to get to go to heaven one of these days. It, te it tells us it's undefiled. That means that it, it can't get messed up. 
Huh? What, what we got waiting ahead for us, even though you're going through difficulties right now, what you have waiting ahead for you, can't nothing mess it up. You can miss it, but it can't get messed up. There won't be no devil there. That's one of the things I'm going to like most about heaven. There ain't going to be no devil. Amen. There shall by no means enter anything that defileth or makes a lie or an abomination. There ain't going to be none of that stuff up there. Ain't gonna be, you ain't going to have to deal with any of that. Inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. That means that, that, that it, 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 it's going to go on, and 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 there'll never be any more trials or difficulties to face. Reserved in heaven for you. That means it's got your name on it. If I reserve a room in a hotel, man, I go, you know what I tell them when I walk up to the desk? I tell them my name. That's exactly what I tell them. Well, your name ain't no big deal, Brother Taylor. It is when I got a reservation. Huh? That means some other cat ain't going to come in there and take it from me. I got my name on it. The Bible said that we've got things reserved in heaven just for us. God knows us well enough. He knows exactly who we are. He knows when we're going to get there. knows what kind of reward he's going to give us and for what. Reserved in heaven. For you, verse number five, were, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. That means, and, and we're blessed by the assurance that God will keep us saved and ready for heaven if we want to be kept. Now, Brother Taylor, are you internal securities? No, not a, not a little bit. But I tell you what I do believe, I believe that as long as I want to be kept, God will keep me. I believe as long as I want to make it to heaven, God's going to help me make it. I believe as long as I keep my eyes on the prize that awaits me in the skies, I can get there. It doesn't make any difference how rough it gets down here, how many difficulties I have to face. I believe that God is able to get me there. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody, y'all need to get stirred in your soul about the fact that God is able. We are blessed with the assurance well, now praise God, we can make it from here. Amen. Verse 6 and 7. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. And sometimes it just has to be that way, doesn't it? Because of the circumstances we're facing and all that stuff, you know. I mean, if, I mean listen, if you, if you had a loved one that was lost and you wasn't burdened over it, there'd be something wrong with you. It needs to be that way. It needs to be a burden when you need a burden. If you're concerned about things, you need to have it. But that's what it's talking about there. It says, says, where, uh, says that uh, wherein you greatly rejoice for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. You know, if, 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 you're, facing, if you're facing things that are that are bombarding you about your faith and trying to discourage you and keep you from going on for Jesus. Uh, you need to be heavy over that. If it's going to try to destroy you, it just that's what he's talking about. I mean, trials and troubles and stuff down here. If we didn't care, we didn't care that we didn't care, we'd all go to the pit. But it says we're blessed because even through the trials that we're facing now and make us weary and make us sad that when we get to heaven that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire. But when we get to heaven God will honor us and reward us for our faithfulness. And we will be happier about our reward than we ever were depressed about our trials. Think about that. Huh? 
we'll, we'll be more excited and glad about the fact that God has helped us and we made it into the kingdom than we ever were depressed because we got discouraged over the stuff the devil was trying to do to destroy us. Verse 8, whom having not seen, you love, and who, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That verse says that even though we don't see Jesus face to face, we love him, don't we? That's what, that's what it says, having not seen, you love. Uh, none of us have seen Jesus at any time, I mean, face to face. But we will after a while. But oh, we sing it quite a bit around here. One of my favorite songs is, Oh, How I Love Jesus. And believing that he will take us home with him someday makes us rejoice and feel joy that we can't even describe. Why? Because it's joy produced by the glory of God. But that brings us to verse 9. And that's what I want you to think about this morning. Every one of you receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Fireproof faith. Why is your faith so important? Because if you don't have faith in Jesus, in who he is, what he did on the cross, and that he did it for you personally, you won't make it to heaven. Fireproof faith is believing that if there hadn't have been another person in the world that needed to be saved, that Jesus would have come down and died just for you. Amen. That's the faith that will keep you out of hell. Amen. And I am concerned that there's somebody in here right now that you need to exercise that kind of faith. Brother David, if you come, I'm going to quit. But I want to give somebody a chance here this morning. We've been going through Thanksgiving, you know. And we talk a lot about Thanksgiving and we're thankful for our country and we're thankful for our families and we're thankful for our food. We're thankful for all of that. But I'm going to tell you, there is nothing more important than knowing that it's well with your soul. Amen. I am thankful today yes. that I know that I'm saved. Yes, I'm, thankful that I, I'm thankful that I know I, that I know that if I mess up, I know where to go Amen. to where I can get it straightened out again. I'm thankful that if, that, if, that if I have any problems, that I know who I can take them to that, that, that cares about them. I'm, I'm thankful that even if I make mistakes and cause things to be problems in my life and all, and it was my own stupidity, I know a God that is so merciful that if I go to him and I ask him to forgive me and help me get my act together, he will straighten it out and help me. I'm thankful for that. I believe that we need to try to conduct ourselves in a right manner. I believe that righteousness is one of the most beautiful things that you'll ever see in this world. But I'm glad that we've got a Savior. I'm glad that I know somebody that can help us I'm glad, brother, I'm glad, Brother Presley, that you got a gospel to preach to Germany and places wherever you go. Like my old pastor used to say, I know a lot of people preach the gospel better than me, but ain't none got a better gospel to preach. Fireproof faith. 
Think of all the, think of all the souls that are going to be standing on the glassy sea one of these days that, that should have burned for what they've done. And there they are, eternal, in the presence of God. Won't be no flame to touch them. Never have another tear or sorrow. All because they had faith in one particular person. And that person's name is Jesus. And we just come through Thanksgiving. We're thankful for Jesus. But we're moving up on Christmas. And just to think that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, not burn for eternity, but have everlasting life. What a Savior. What a Savior. The Bible said he's able to save to the uttermost all them that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I want you to lift your hands here. Let's, let's, just, let's just worship Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus is. To the believer's ears, it calms his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. Makes a wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Dear name, that rock on which I build my shield in hiding place, my never failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace and weak the effort of my heart and cold my warmest thought. But when I see thee as thou art, I'll praise thee as I ought. Till then I will thy name proclaim with every fleeting breath and let the music of that name refresh my soul in death. Come on, let's hear. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, precious unto us that are saved. He's precious. Now, if you're here today, just by chance, you might be here. You don't know that it's well with your soul. But you'd like to have that assurance in your heart that if you should die or the rapture take place, that you'd be ready to go to heaven. But you don't have it. But you'd like to get it. You could get it right now. All you got to do is confess to Jesus that you sinned and believe that when he died on the cross, if it hadn't been nobody else that needed to be saved, he would have died just for you. And you can leave here knowing it's well with your soul. If you're here today and you need Jesus to save you, won't you just get up out of your seat and come down here and find your place to pray? God would like, like to help you. There ain't nobody else in this room that, that wouldn't like to see you get what you need from God. You're among friends. If you're here this morning and you don't know as well with your soul, I want you to just get out of your seat and come on down here. I'm going to take a little courage, but if you need Jesus, it'd be a good time to do it. Anybody? Anybody? You made mistakes and you're sorry for them. You'd like the Lord to forgive you. You're sitting in a cold crowd of people who's made a lot of mistakes with you, so you might as well come on. Ain't nothing to be embarrassed about. Just ask Jesus to help you. Anybody, anywhere. Anybody else? 
you'd just like to cast yourself on his mercy. Anybody? All right, let's all come find us a place to pray. Everybody will.